As a player, his style is considered by some as conservative. But off the ice, that's the last word you'd use to describe defenseman Brad Lukowicz. In this edition of Inside the Lightning, we'll talk with one of the Bolts' most colorful characters about becoming a dad. Tampa Bay's acquisition of his former Dallas Stars teammate and fellow defenseman Daryl Sador, his love of music, and his growing interest in the music business. June 22nd, 2002 is a day Brad Lukowicz will never forget. Not only was it his wedding day, it was also the day he found out he had been traded to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now after the initial shock had worn off, his biggest worry was figuring out how to break the news to his bride-to-be, Kara. You know, I can't talk to her the day of, of the wedding, can't see her, who do I tell? So uh, ironically enough, Daryl Sador was in my wedding, he was one of my groomsmen. Right. So I got him, he came down right away and I told him and he, you know, he was you know, kind of bummed out and he called his wife and uh, we were kind of like, what, what should we do? How do we break this to, you know, to Kara and everything? And well, they, uh, they wound up calling uh, one of Kara's, I don't know, maid, maid of honors, I guess, mm -hmm. whatever they are, they're called, and the bridesmaids. Bridesmaid, there you go. And uh, I'm, I'm working it. <laughs> and uh, the, she, she thought it would be the best if, if my mom told her. So they went and Kara said all day that everyone had, I told my dad, you know, but you know, they, everyone was kind of acting kind of weird around her. And she's like, oh, like, oh, they don't like me. You know, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Brad's taking yeah, off or Brad, something. Uh, what's right. going on? Brad, they can't find Brad. <laughs> the, the tuxedos are wrecked or something's wrong. Like what, she knew something was up, but she didn't know what it was. And uh, finally my mom sat her down and she goes, you know, you excited? She goes, yeah, I'm excited. Are you nervous? Yeah. You get to start this brand new life in Florida. And Kara was like, yeah, what? <laughs> in Florida? She goes, what do you mean? She goes, Brad just got traded to Tampa Bay. She goes, she has this little lip thing. She's like, well, at least I have the perfect car. Because we have a convertible car. <laughs> That's all she carried. She had a convertible car. We moved to Florida where everything was fine. So, and then they called me back and said, she's got the perfect car. She's happy. I said, all right, good. Everything's fine. Game on. Let's go. So uh, she knew. And we didn't even have a chance to talk about it till we were in the limo going home. I just kind of looked at her. I was like, so how do you feel about that? And she goes, you know, wherever we are, we're going to make it work. So. It was, that was it. It was, it wound up being okay. Cause I actually, I didn't worry about the wedding for the rest of the day. I was worried about, uh, you know, going to Tampa, you know? Right. Yeah. So that was it. It was, it worked out for the best of us, for us both. So after the initial shock of this whole thing wears off and the, the wedding's done and the honeymoon and everything, what, what, what is then your next thought about this? You've already, like you said, gone online, checked out, Hey, I can play for this club, but what, what, what are you feeling about this from a hockey standpoint? Well, you know, like you always hear like, those teams that have the potential to be a good team and Tampa was always in that mix you know Tampa has always had great draft picks uh, and then in the last couple of years they would started to be a little bit more competitive um, you can see that the, the potential was starting to come through on those guys like Vinny and uh, you know Richie uh, Corey Sarge you know, who in my mind is one of the most improved players in the NHL um, you can just see these guys getting better and better. And to, to come in to that at the beginning of it was, is great. You know, I, I, knew, I knew, I was like, well, you know, there's a chance that maybe next year it might be that year. And I came into training camp and I was blown away by the work ethic of this team. I was just, I, I couldn't believe it. I've been used to going to Dallas training camps where we go to Vail and go fishing and we went uh, mountain biking and things like that. We came here for uh, you know, Camp Torturella <laughs> and it was, man, I'd never been into anything like this before. It was, it blew me away. But the guys were just so into it, you know, it was like, yeah, you know, like, I, I can do this and I can do that. And it was so competitive amongst the guys in a friendly way that it was, it was just a great feeling right off the bat. Like, you know what, this is it, this is, this, is the, this is what you need. This is, this is a winning combination. And you saw the start that we had, you know, and you actually saw the finish that we had. We had a great run last year. Um, this year, same thing. You know, we got started off good. We had a little bad December there, but you know what? You can't win 82 games. You're gonna have your slumps here and there. Um, it, we're ahead of where we were last year, yeah, in the standings, uh, points-wise. Um, this team is just 
it, it, we, we, we learn from our mistakes and it's just been going on. It's just uh, the things that we're doing right now are just getting better and better. And you can, like I said before, the potential levels, it's not potential anymore. You see how good these players really are. You know, and these guys, you, you, if, if something gets, gets in the way, you know, they knock it over. Like it's, you know, Rich, Richie was having trouble there scoring goals, you know, and he just, he was in practice, shooting the puck, shooting the puck, just learn, just, just staying with it, playing hard, working on his defensive game. If I can't score goals, no one's going to score against me. You know, that's just the kind, of, the kind of players that these guys are. They just rose to the occasion and brought the game that much further from what you would expect from them. Coming from a club like Dallas, a perennial playoff contender, a team that had won the Stanley Cup while you were there, and then coming to the Lightning, you mentioned before you felt like this club was, was right there on the brink. But what about your experience that you had in Dallas? How important was that when you came here, and how much do you think it helped last year to kind of get the team on that roll and, and back to the playoffs for the first time in a long time? I think one of the things that I, I, could, I could bring to them was just my enthusiasm. I've always been known as a very energetic and outgoing person. And uh, I just, I wanted to, you know, basically let the guys know that it's fun. It's, it's not just, don't be, don't be nervous, don't be scared of playing, because that's, you're gonna get beat. Go out there and have some fun. This is the playoffs, this is, this is the big show. You know, playing in the NHL is the show. This is the big show, this is where, this is the best of the best. Go out and have fun. Do what got you here in the first place, and do it better. And the one thing, you know, like, like I always said, is it takes everybody in that room. Um, we had guys that weren't in game one, starting. You know, they were in the, they were playing by the end of the series, by the, end, the first series. And I told them it's going to take everybody in this room for us to get any further. Because so don't feel bad that you're not in, because you you, you got to work hard. You will get your chance, and when you get your chance. If, if you're sulking and not getting it done, you're letting the rest of the guys down. So that was, that was one of the points I wanted to make to the guys, you know, like, don't feel bad at the beginning because you're gonna get your chance. And when you get your chance, do the best with, of, of what you can for it. Uh, the guys, uh, and like, it was just it was so proud to see how the guys played last year in the playoffs, it was amazing. It's kind of like what happened to you when you were in Dallas when, when you won the cup that year, right? You didn't play, uh, the, you know, the entire, uh, you know, run to the cup, but you got in there and when you, you had to take advantage of your opportunity, right? That was kind of like, that was basically the point. I, mean, I said, like, I sat out the first two games uh, against Edmonton um, and then I got my chance. One of the guys got hurt. I got to go in. I mean, and I was playing, we went into triple overtime. I wound up playing like 40 minutes that night, you know, and this is my second game. It was just... It blew me away that they had that confidence in me, but they all they also just said, you know what, you're here. There's a reason you're here. Um, we believe in you. Believe in yourself. Go out and have some fun. It was great. I, I, it was the best time I ever had. Uh, was that first playoffs? It was it was amazing. There was no pressure on me to you know if I made a mistake, I was supposed to. You know if I did a great play, you know everybody's happy. So it, there was no pressure on me, and that's how that's that was kind of the point I was trying to give these guys. There's no pressure on us. We're Tampa Bay. Everyone had us dead last at the beginning of the season. Let's just go out there and be spoilers. Let's go out there and play our game like we did all season, and uh, you, you'd be surprised at what, at what the outcome's gonna be. So for you then, how difficult was it at the end of that Jersey series? You get hurt, you broke your hand, right? And you missed the yeah. last, what were, ended up being the last two games of that series. It would've been the last two, yeah. Right. I mean, but, how hard is that then for you to have to sit there and say, and, and watch, and not be able to get out there and help and, and maybe help turn things around and, and take that series a little deeper or maybe beat Jersey. Knowing that they won it, you know, in the end, and knowing how close we were in every game, we lost out in overtime games, you know, and it was just nail biters. And when, you know, when something like that happens, basically for me it was shut your mouth and don't feel sorry for yourself and don't bring any negative things into the room, go in there and cheer these guys on. And, you know, that's, that's all I could do. I, I, I felt bad. I felt, you know, man, I, I, can't, I can't do anything for these guys. You know, I, I worked hard to get to this, to this spot and to be one of the guys to, that are looked to for in the playoffs. And, you know, it's all done because, you know, of a, a broken bone. You know, it's like, 
man, I, just, I wish I could be out there. But, you know, bringing po negative energy into the room wasn't going to help help the guys at all. So, you know, I was right back in there, you know, cheering them on, you know, and it's just too bad we, we couldn't have done it. I mean, it's, it's one shot away in every game. You know, we, were, we played just an excellent series. So from a confidence standpoint, that has to help you guys. The fans, obviously, this year are showing their appreciation for the hockey you guys played last year and this year. And now the organization, the trade for Daryl Sador, a guy that you played with in Dallas. I mean, what does that say to you about what the organization's expectations uh, are now of this team? Well, we've all, like, all, all the guys in the room have always believed in each other that we could get it done. And now... When you make a move like that, especially at this time of year, before the trade deadline, you don't wait till that happens. Really, it shows that they believe in us now. And they believe that, you know, with an extra little nudge on the back, um, now we can go to the next level. And, you know, with Daryl coming in, he's got so much leadership and so much uh, playoff experience. And, and, well, and, you know, it just shows. You know, the guy, the guy is an amazing player. He fits right in. No one, everyone's already talking, you know, this and that with him. They're joking around with him. It's like he was, he's been here for, you know, years. Uh, he fit right in with us. Uh, we're, we're glad to have him, and he's going to, you know, you're just going to see him get better as time goes on. Brad, I think most fans probably know that uh, you're the guy in control of the boombox in the locker room. Uh, but uh, for you, it's not just about the kind of music that gets played in there. I mean, it's uh, music is is a little bit more important to you than the next guy, I think. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know. I, it's a release for me. It you know, it's something that uh, I've been just interested in since. I mean, my mom tells me stories about when I used to have headphones on downstairs and be singing to you know Beatles records and uh, you know Skinner records, th things like that. And you know, I obviously I, I don't remember. I was too young to do. I probably making up my own words as it went along. But you know, uh, it just it's gone back. I could always find. You know, if I'm in front of a bad mood, you know, and it, it needs some, I need something to, to get me out of it, um, you know, I can always find the right, right, right music to do it. And it's just something, you know, like I've gotten into starting playing instruments. Uh, when I was younger, it was, you know, wind instruments. I was playing like saxophone, things like that, and, you know, and just, you know, I hang out with a couple bands now, and uh, I've been getting into trying to uh, play, play their songs. So one day maybe I'll be able to get up on stage and play one song with them. That would be my ultimate goal. But... Um, no, it's just, it's an emotional thing for me. It's just, uh, I love music. I, th I think it's one thing that you, you can express yourself in um, regardless of, you know, whatever taste you have. It's just the one thing that, you know, is, is, is pure to me. Uh, you're a hard rock kind of guy, let's make no mistake about that, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, pretty heavy. Um, but, you know, there's, you know, I don't know. It, it's, it all depends on the mood. I mean, after games, you uh, know, I wouldn't say I listen to country, but you know, um, like I've I've gone down like Sister Hazel, you know, things like that, um, are they're fine with me. Um, you know, my wife, she's got a little taste of her own music. Uh, I can't really. <laughs> I try and put up with it because she puts up with mine, you know. And we always get in the same arguments, you know, like you know Justin Timberlake, you know, she <laughs> got to listen to Justin. And, uh, you know, I try to put up with it for a little bit, and I think I'm doing a little better, you know, trying to find something in it, you know, if it's the words or whatever, but um, she puts up with Mudvayne, and she puts up with uh, Pantera and, thing, and Disturbed and stuff like that, so, you know, we're trying to find an, an equal... Uh, a middle ground for us so uh, but I don't I don't know I just I don't I don't see myself going that you way you never will no never, come on it's all right <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't see I don't I don't see it happening so for you then uh how important then is music as you prepare for a game right before the game you already said afterwards sometimes you like to get a, a you know something a little more mellow but is it an important part of your pre-game ritual then yeah definitely um you know in the morning so you, you know we tend to put on something you know that's pretty easy listening you know uh, you know, for most of the guys, you know, three uh, three doors down is a big one. You know, uh, it's, you know, Revis and I have a band out of Vancouver that I've been playing. I've been trying to sneak in there a little bit, and actually the guys they, they seem to like it. They haven't they haven't booed it yet, so I'm pretty happy with that because they're pretty picky. And uh, you know, and then uh, when I come back to the rink, you know, I tend to on the way down uh, I get a little bit hairy. You know, I get some Drowning Pool and Pantera. Uh, you know, there's the heavier Nickelback tunes. Uh, it gets, uh, it, 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 what it, you know, it just, it kind of, I get that little rush, you know, and I'm in there and guys always, 
you know, make fun of me because I'm tapping my hands and I'm air guitar and whatever. But, you know, it's just, uh, it's a way for me to get ready. This is something that you're obviously really passionate about. And now you're, you're kind of getting to that point where you want to get more involved on the business end with music, right? You get a band uh, that you're involved with that you're trying to help promote and get known a little bit better, right? Yeah, um, with all my ties to uh, certain bands, uh, a lot of the bands that I do know, uh, like Theory of a Dead Man, um, Default, Nickelback, they all come out of the Vancouver area. Um, so the band that I'm helping out, Split Track, they, you know, they're they are from Toronto. They moved out to Vancouver. They're recording their demo out there, and uh, they played a couple shows. And they're starting to, to move around. They're on the island uh, doing some shows in Victoria. Uh, they're gonna start moving towards Calgary, doing some shows out there. Basically, what I do is just, you know, if if they have a question, I can actually actually ask someone that's gone through it. Um, someone that's succeeded through it, someone that's did the wrong thing. You know, what did you guys do in this situation? Well, we did it this way, and don't do it that way. It was terrible. You know, um, little things like that. It's um, like playing hot. It, it very, yeah, right? and, but, and yeah, and it always turns around whenever I call them. They always ask me, "Whoa, what do you got to do here?" You know, it, it's the same way. We always switch it around. They're always asking hockey. I'm always asking that. But it just gives them a heads up on what you know what's in store for them. You know, uh, how hard they really got to work. And uh, I believe in I believe in these guys. Uh, they're they're a really uh, talented bunch. There's three guys in the band. They're doing a great job, and they're hard workers. They, they call me they call me three times a day sometimes. You know, we we did this. All right, well go do this. Oh, we already did that. Okay, well you good. You know, they're they really they're really hard work and they want to get it done. So uh, it's basically all I re I don't I don't have a contract with them. I don't want to make any money off of it. I just want to see them succeed. And for for them to do that, I'm just trying to give them uh, you know the, the the best advice that I possibly can. got to go to Vancouver we did get an opportunity to my the band that split track they were they put on a show the night before our game. They played it like they played an early show so it was kind of dead in there but you know it, it was it was amazing. It was the first time I got to see them live. Uh, a couple of the guys came out, MTV came, much music was there. Um, it was uh, a couple of band local bands, Theory was there, Default was there. It was I mean it wound up being a great show. They put on a fantastic show for for what was, for what it was. It was a small venue, but they just did a great job. It sounded great, and uh, you know exceeded every expectation. I was really proud of them. They did a good job. Seems like there's a lot of this going around on the team lately, but your life certainly has changed a lot since the summer with a new addition to the family, Michaela, who's uh, seven months old, eight months old now. As we sit yeah. here talking about this today, I mean. We all know that this changes your life pretty significantly. How how has it impacted you? Uh, I mean, it's everything's a positive. It's great. I love it. It's uh, it's amazing being a dad. It's I mean, she couldn't be a better a better baby either. I mean, she's she's wheeling around already. She's crawling and she's up on everything. She smiles every time you come in the door. I mean, it's pretty tough to be in a bad mood when you got you know. Uh, her at home, you know, you come in the door and she, you get that smile. You could be in the worst mood ever, and be in the most pain ever, and you know, she, she'll she'll make you feel good. It's uh, it's awesome. I love it. Um, it. Hasn't really changed too much. I mean, we still go out and do our thing, and we go out, do, you know, party as much as we possibly can. You know, when we, <laughs> when we can. But the only difference is, rather than coming home at two, you come home at eleven. <laughs> you pick your spots now, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to pick your spots a little bit. No. Uh, no, uh, we you know we we get a lot of help um, when we're back in Dallas. We got a lot of help. Uh, Kara's family's uh, right there, so um, we had a lot of help from them. Um, out here, we've got some help, but uh, you know it's just she doesn't miss a game. Uh, really, uh, Kara and Michaela, they're out every game. Uh, they're uh, they're my number one fans, I guess. You know, they're it's everyone asks her like, how do you bring her to every game? She goes, I don't want her to miss it. She loves it, you know, and it's it's great. It. It's been amazing. Uh, Kara's life is probably the one that changes the most. Obviously, she's with her, you know, pretty much 24/7. And uh, you know, it, 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 the one thing that is probably the biggest adjustment is going on the road now. 
You know, you're always as soon as you get as soon as you get on the ground, you're calling. What did she do? Did she do anything special today? You know, and there for about two weeks there, I was missing everything. The first time she crawled, the first time she sat up, the first time she was standing up. You know, and it's just like those things were killing me. And now she kind of knows. She she doesn't really know what's going on with the phone, but she she thinks I'm in there or something. Because <laughs> if I talk, they'll put the phone up to her ear, and you know she'll start you know kind of blabbering back to me a little bit. And I love it. It's just it's it's been great. You get nervous when June rolls around. It seems like it doesn't seem like I know for a fact every transaction that you've been involved in, <laughs> whether draft day or traded or whatever, have all happened in June. Yeah, June's a big month. Yeah, yeah, man, I'm telling you, got married, got traded, been signed. Uh, it's been, uh, yeah, June is uh, June is a pretty busy month, I think, for a lot of a lot of players and a lot of teams. Uh, you know, they're trying to solidify their roster for their upcoming seasons, things like that, and see where their money is going to be. And um, it just seems uh, June is my unlucky month or lucky month. Either way, you want to look at it. So uh, it's been. Uh, it's actually worked out for me that June's probably been my best month ever. So, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to this June. I don't know what's going to happen yet, but, you know, uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, we're, we're ex it's, you know, that's, it's just the way it comes. You know, that's the way it goes. Sometimes, you know, uh, things just kind of fall into place, and uh, that's just, I guess, the time of year that, for me, that is probably the bu busiest for me. You seem like a, a guy that likes to spin up. I ask you the question about June and you don't look at it in a bad way, you look at it in a good way. You seem like you always want to try and spin things positive. Is that kind of your nature? You want to be yeah. really a positive guy? Yeah, I always try to find the silver lining, I guess. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, I mean, life's too short. Um, I mean, people make mistakes, all that jazz, you know. Um, you can either sit there and dwell on it or you can, you know, get over it. You know, that's the way it is. People make mistakes. Things happen. Um, there's things that are out of your control that, are, that happen. Why, why do you want to be, uh, you know, sitting there, you know, getting mad or, you know, holding grudges all the time? You're going to be a pretty dismal person all the time. So, you know, get over it, uh, learn from it, correct it, get on with it. That's about it. 12.30 is a lot of time left, but the Lightning, you ought to get that proximity goal soon. Boyle winding, shooting, they score! Right on cue, Chief, it's tapped home by Brad Lukowicz.